Hello, I'm Joy Lawrence. Welcome to my introduction to Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Here is my cover page and you'll see that I have the sources that I'm going to use throughout my presentation. When you do your presentation for the end of the semester, I want you to do this kind of similar format. So this is something I want you to pay attention to throughout my lectures in this class. John Barrent is the author of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, and I have given you a picture of him when he was young. I always think that's nicer to highlight the author at the time that they wrote the, the piece of work. So here is a picture, like I said, of John Barrent, and this is the source where I got that picture. So again, going back to the title page, I have all of my sources here, and then on each slide I have given you the individual source that I used for that information. A little bit about creative nonfiction because that is how this book is classified. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil follows what is known as the emotional version of storytelling. So there are two different formats for creative nonfiction, or not specifically formats, but two ways of going about it. One is it's the facts. This happened, we went here, this is what was really said. And then there's the other version, the I'm going to give you an emotional experience. I'm going to convey how I felt about something or the feel of an event. And this is an author's note from the end of the book. I do give the page number, although I recognize that that might be different for some of you because there, there are different page numbers for different versions of the book. So this is the page number for the version that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and let you read that. I don't need to, I, I don't want to read that to you. I know that you have probably already read through it. And so he'll, he's telling you here that these are real characters. He has changed the names. That is very common. But also that he's, he's kind of retold some of the events. So in the book, it appears as if he already knows Jim Williams before any of the scandal starts. But really, in reality, he didn't come in until after. So, but he wants to convey the emotional experience of the event. So anyway, some people don't like that. Some people like just the facts. I want to know exactly what happened and when. Um, I kind of prefer the story. Go ahead and tell me a story. I like that. Now, I this PowerPoint is going to probably be much more interesting to you after you've gotten into the book a little bit, um, because what I'm going to be doing is showing you who the people are, real pictures of these people. And again, that, that's a lot more interesting after you have already formed a relationship with them and read the book. So come back and look at this later if you want to take a look at some of these characters. Here we have Jim Williams. Um, this is the character that the story really focuses on. And this is a picture of him standing outside Mercer House, which is where a lot of the events are going to take place. And here's a more modern picture let me get rid of that. I'm sorry. And here's a more modern picture of Mercer House. Jim Williams, um, here he is on the tr on trial. Um, I don't want to talk too much about what he's on trial for because I don't want to give anything away in the book, but this is him at the actual trial. There is a movie called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, and it does a really good job of sticking with the heart of the story and the, the book and the characters, although the timeline is a little different, they compress things in a different way. So I, I do encourage you to watch it if you would like to see a representation of the book, but keep in mind that it can't replace the book because it is going to, I am going to give you um, quizzes and tests on things for the book. Um, so if you try to watch the movie as the as instead of reading the book, then you're not going to be able to complete those assignments. Here is a picture of Jim and his mother. She is not a very prominent character in the book, but you will see her in the book. Sonny Siler, there are two when when the event happens and Jim needs a lawyer, he has two lawyers. Um, Bobby Lee Cook is his first lawyer, and Sonny Siler here is the lawyer um, that that he hires after Bobby Lee Cook. Again, I don't want to go into, the, into any of the details because I don't want to give anything away for, for you. I want you to be able to experience the story. Um, but anyway, this is Sonny Siler. Danny Hansford, um, he wasn't very easy to find pictures of. Here he is a mugshot of him and that is going to be, um, that's going to make a lot of sense after you've gotten into the story a little bit. Mandy Nichols, she is one of the characters in the story. 
Um, you'll see her off and on. Sometimes she's prominent. Other times she kind of is in the background. Joe Odom, uh, I find him to be a fascinating character. You're going to see him throughout the book. And while you're reading, something to keep in mind with him is he gets away with a lot of things that most people wouldn't get away with. So that is one thing you might want to think about is what does this say about, about Savannah, Georgia? That's where it takes place and the community there. In fact, that's one of the things that you'll want to focus on when we're reading different stories and poems, books. There, there's often some kind of theme. In fact, there's usually more than one theme. Um, maybe the writer will intend a theme and that's something that readers will see. Readers might pick up on some other unintended theme. So be open to that. One of the things that I want you to pay attention to here is living the fantasy. How the people, the characters in this story, they, uh, they want to pretend that things are a certain way. And even when the facts and the details of their lives point out that things aren't the way they want them to be, they ignore that and live the fantasy instead. So I want you to think about that as you're reading. The, the idea of living the reality versus living the fantasy. And when you see Lady Chablis, one of the major characters in this book, here she is, uh, that is something I want you to think about with her is what is John Barrent trying to say with this character of Lady Chablis? Um, she, well, again, I don't want to give anything away, but she is not quite what she appears to be when you first meet her. And he does a very kind overview of her character. And I want you to think about why would he do that and how do the other characters in the story treat her and how would other people in general during this time period and in Savannah, Georgia, how would you expect them to treat her? So why is there that contrast? What do you think John Barrent is trying to do with that in his story? Spencer Lawton is the prosecuting attorney that you will see in the story. And he's kind of new on his job and, and trying to prove himself. And it is a fascinating, a fascinating turn of events that you see. So something with him to think about is how far will he go to be successful? Minerva is a voodoo priestess. And I, these were very difficult pictures to get because she believed that if someone had her picture, they could put a hex or a curse on her. So she really worked hard not to let her picture be taken. Uh, and here she is. This picture of her right here is with Sunny Siler, the, again, the attorney who worked for Jim Williams. Um, again, you're going to see a lot about Minerva in the book. If you do decide to watch the movie, there are some interesting details. I kind of think of the movie as a companion piece for the book because there are things that readers will get from the movie that you wouldn't have gotten if you hadn't watched it. These are the characters, the main characters of the book, and I wanted to point them out so that you could kind of have a little bit of context for them as you're reading. This is not the typical type of lecture I will give for each of the stories or each of the biographies that I will go over. Most of them will generally be biographical information about the writer, but this one, I wanted to give a little bit of information about the characters in the story and show you some pictures of them in the real world so that, again, you could have some kind of context. So I hope that I've given you some interesting pictures and details to help you enjoy the story as you read. If you have any questions, do please email me. I'm happy to answer them. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.